He's a good God all by himself, ain't he? Sometimes we forget to tell God, thank you. Amen. We just honor the Lord. We honor the Lord for being here. Our beloved pastor, Reverend Hill, is a dynamo. And if y'all didn't catch it, when you see, if, if, you know what, I, I want to say this to everybody, but when you see your pastor praising God, All right. it ought to jump off into you. Because he's the man of God. He's the one that God has called. And if the spirit is, is on the head, if you're like me and you're standing in need of a blessing, you say, pass me not. Yeah. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. And I'm standing in the need of a blessing. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We just, we thank God. I, 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 I do not want to hold y'all. We honor the Lord for Reverend Brown and for the beautiful church service, the deacons, the brethren, everybody here that names themselves in the household of faith, our mothers, the, 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 the church is so marvelous. Our musicians, they are just, oh, my goodness. I told Reverend Hill a minute ago, I said, the field is already plowed. All we need to do, like he said, is going on home. So I feel like it's my job to give a finger sandwich today, if that's all right. Amen. They done already done everything. I may as well, you know, do a finger sandwich. But we honor the Lord for everybody here. I want to say to all, my wife is right there on about the third row. I believe it is. Will you lift your hand so they can? That's my wife. My mama's on about the sixth row. Mama, lift your hand. My daughters are back on about the who knows what row back there. And my grandson in that orange shirt who looks just like me. If you want to see a mini me, that's my clone. That's my clone. I'll just tell y'all. That's, that's my clone. He brings J-O-Y into my heart and my soul and my spirit. But I, I'm, I'm honored today to be here. I won't preach too long if that's all right with y'all. As I said, I'm going to move some of my stuff out of the way. It's, it's always good to be able to be in a place where... The scripture says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, but it's better to be in a place where there's liberty. The scripture says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Uh -huh. And when, when there's a spirit that flows and overflows, then you can be like David and say, my cup runneth over. Uh -huh. You should never go to church feeling sad and come back feeling the same way. You know, uh, uh, the song says, and I, I want to sing, but I'm not going to sing because it's a quiet song. But the song said, I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary, worn, and sad. But I found in him a, a resting place. And he have made me glad. Now, I ain't talking about nobody else, but when I get glad, I get H-A-P-P-Y. Anybody else in here get happy? And I can say it, if you can't tell it, let me tell it. I can tell you what the Lord done done for me. If you would, would you help me by standing on your feet, going to the eighth chapter of the book of John. <clears throat> going to try our best to be as much abbreviated as I can. I'm going to put this Bible to the side here because my Bible is so enormous and the pulpit Bible is enormous. And I could just move some of this out of the way, and I'll use the pulpit Bible. Grab a handkerchief or two. John, the 8th chapter, verses 1 through about verse 11. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. Give me a half of a minute to get myself together up here because I just removed my Bible from where I was. And I, I, I tell you all, it, it elevates my heart and my spirit when I look at the goodness of the Lord. And some people don't see it, but I love being a Christian. I got saved when I was 17, and I'm 54 now, so you can do the math. I was in college at 17 years of age, and, and I got to know Jesus in a personal way. Amen. And since that time, he's blessed me to be married for 33, going on 34 years. Amen. Same wife, too. I just want to make sure everybody knew. 
Some people, you know, y'all understand. The Bible says here in John 8, if you'll read with me, Jesus went up into the Mount of Olives. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what says thou? So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first Cast the stone at her. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the elders, even unto the least, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. All together, and she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, Urshers, you may be released from your charge. The scripture is very plain here, and I want to preach a simple little message on she met him in his mercy. All right. Is that all right? She met him. In his mercy. Now, St. Augustine said, trust the past to God's mercy, the present to God's love, and the future to God's providence. Now, I want to say that one more time so you'll catch that. Trust the past to God's mercy. All right. Did y'all hear me? Yeah. The present to God's love, yeah. and the future to God's providence. There is a declaration that is inclusive and concise, direct and deadly. And it's in Romans 3, 23, and it says, all. all right. Now, I got three points I'm going to give you. One, I, I may as well tell you my points now because I'm going to abbreviate this. Is that all right? That's all right. Point one is that we're all helpless, okay? All of sin and come short of the glory of God. Two is that God's mercy and grace is, is that for everyone. And three, that we're living under the grace of God. Is that all right? All right, so I'll get to it. So I'm just showing you how I'm abbreviating it so that you can follow along with me. But the, the, the declaration is that, that, that by one man's sin, Romans 5 and 12, all became sinners. And so by one man's sin, uh, all became sinners. And so we see the preachers here and the Pharisees, they, they brought a woman taken in the very act, uh, whether she was uh, uh, known or not, but she was busy doing her wrong. And they were busy making the decision of their own how to trap Jesus. And, and, and the declaration still yet says by them, guilty, guilty, guilty. They're calling her guilty. Right. Y'all with me? Uh-huh. <laughs> And, and, and since they're saying that she's guilty, the, the, the woman was there, but the dick, ditch digging folks was there with their shovels. Uh-huh. Are y'all with me? Yeah. There, there were folks there that, that were dick digging, and, 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 and they, they, they tried to figure out a way how that they can get her before Jesus and then mess her up with their traditions. And while they are there trying to mess up her with the traditions they also were trying to trap Jesus to see whether or not he was going to go along with the traditions of the fathers and and here's the funny part about the traditions of the fathers because I want to show you something that was very very silent in the scripture but very apparent when they brought her in the very act of adultery you know oftentimes we say what was the man right you've heard people say well you know he brought the woman but what was but here was the time, the time that it was at that place, according to what was written. Uh, and, 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 and they said that at that time, by the writers, they said that the people constantly were there committing adultery. Right. And I, I, I looked at that and I, I read what Dr. Adam Clark said. He said the poorest writer said that the woman's name was Susanna. Her husband's name was Manasseh. But he was a decrepit man. 
And, and back then, with him being decrepit or old, y'all know how an uh, older man takes on him a younger woman thinking that he's going to get rejuvenated, and that was his way of doing it without taking a blue pill. Y'all don't want to say that, but I'm not going to talk about that because I don't want to get too many people too mad, too upset right. because y'all know what time we're really in. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But she was looking, and somehow or another they trapped her. And the Bible says that while they brought her before Jesus, there she is at the judgment seat. And there he is, and Jesus is at his highest point in ministry. And you say, what do you mean by that he was at his highest point in ministry? Well, at that point, Jesus had already, according to John chapter 2, he had turned water into wine. Yeah. Amen, yeah. somebody? Huh? Y'all with me? Yeah. And in John chapter 2, he ran everybody out of the temple. He kicked them out and beat them out and said, my father's house should be called the house of prayer, but you made it a den of thieves. In John chapter 3, he met Nicodemus. Anybody with me? Y'all follow me? And Nicodemus had already seen the miracles that Jesus had done because what are some of the miracles he did? He walked on water. Amen. Uh, he, 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 he did something even, even more anomalous than that, because I'm going to just deal with this just for a minute. He met a man in John chapter 5 who was at church, and the Bible calls it the Pool of Bethesda, and five porches were there. And what were they doing? They were waiting on an angel to come down. Just like we just had church and an angel came down and the glory fell, you could get your healing when the glory falls down. Somebody said when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Well, when they were there in church or, or in that place, or when an angel came down, the first one to jump in got his miracle. But in John 5, and I'm just going to walk through the word real fastly, the Bible says that when Jesus was there in John 5, the man is there and he says to Jesus, Jesus comes up to him and there he is and he says, uh, what's your problem? He says, sir, when, when the angel comes, I have no man to put me in to trouble the water. But Jesus realized that the man was looking for a man and didn't know that God was standing there in the flesh, wrapped up, God incarnated. And so he said, rise up, take up your bed and walk. As soon as he did that, there we go. That's the fifth chapter the sixth chapter we see that Jesus has got a church with more than 5,000 folks uh, and the Bible says that why it was 5,000 men not including women uh, and and while they're having church so good the folks got caught up they lost their mind they didn't know what was going on and all of a sudden they didn't even think about it they said I got to go to church so bad I forgot to bring me a lunch so what does he do? He takes the, uh, you know, y'all with me. Everybody with me. Y'all know this is the sixth chapter. I'm just bringing you on up to the eighth chapter so that you can see Jesus is at his highest because Jairus' daughter is already healed and Matthew 8, the woman had already touched the hem of his garment. She made whole. All these miracles had already happened. And in the sixth chapter, he gets up here and he said, boy, it's time for y'all to feed the church. They said, we ain't got nothing. What you talking about? How are we going to feed this multitude? He said, what have you got? And you know what they said? We got, we got a little lad here with two fish and five loaves of bread. But what is that among so many? The Bible says, he says, sit them down in companies of 50. He said, y'all just make a little church of 50, 50 here, 50 there, 50 there, 50 there. He said, and this is what you do. You bring me the two fish and five loaves of bread, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I will bless it, and then I'll break it. You know that's what the Lord does in your life? He blesses you, but before God really blesses you, he got to break you. He got to get some of that stuff out of you, some of that junk out of you, some of that old religion, some of that fake phony stuff that flosses and looks good on the outside, but inside it ain't no good. That's why I tell people, give me that old time religion. I don't need that instant stuff. That instant stuff is just like what you put in the microwave. You know, instant grits. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Instant coffee. My grandmama had a percolator. And I remember seeing it perk on up. And it had a rich, full taste. Uh, Maxwell House is so good. It was good to the... Y'all with me. Everybody's with me. Y'all, 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 y'all. Y'all know how that is. Well, that's when it's the real stuff. I don't need to go to Hardy's. I got a wife who can kneel them biscuits and... Huh, my God, don't get me started. Rhymes ain't got nothing on her collard greens. She puts her foot in. Oh, y'all. Uh, 
Y'all are with me. Y'all are with me. Y'all are with me. Well, let's get on back to it. Two fish and five loaves of bread, and Jesus blesses and breaks it, feeds 5,000. In John, the seventh chapter, after so many things are going on, he said unto the church folks, he said, out of your belly going to flow rivers of living water. So he's at his highest. And by this time, the Pharisees, they are at their highest. They're now trying to persecute him, trying to trap him. So the eighth chapter tells us, they bring him a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. Jesus is at his highest stress. But guess what they brought? And I hate telling y'all what church folks bring. They bring drama. Pastor, I got a problem. Anybody ever? Oh. Stress and drama create drama. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? Strama, 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 strama. Jesus was facing some strama right here. What do you mean strama? If I could put it in modern day times, they brought a woman by herself and it must have been a new episode of cheaters going on. Y'all didn't hear me, did you? Huh? Cheaters is where one partner sets up the other partner and got camera folks watching around. Y'all with me? Y'all ever seen cheaters? Uh -uh, ain't nobody ever seen cheaters. Uh, that's how modern day marriages are so mixed up, so messed up. Uh, if you had to fast forward it or even put it in reverse, that same woman that was on Cheetos was on last week's episode of Brazilla. Right. Don't nobody want to hear me say nothing to you. Y'all right. know what I'm talking about. She was a mess as a Brazilla. Then she got married, couldn't be faithful. Now she's a cheater. And on next episode, she's going to be on Morris show where the man said, you are not the father. Am I in the house? Am I in the house? Am I in the house? Come on. Somebody help me. Am I in the house? That's the way it is modern days. It's mixed up as a bag of Skittles. You get one Skittle out and it's red and you taste it and it's good. You get another one that's yellow and you taste it and it tastes good. You get a blue one out, a green one out, a brown one out. You really want a red one, but by this time you done got so messed up and so mixed up, you just throw the whole bag in your mouth and you taste the whole rainbow. Strama! Strama, strama. Yeah, and marriage is just messed up there. It's almost like the Las Vegas betting. You know, y'all know how folks bet. They say, well, I bet that marriage don't last. Are y'all with me? I bet it don't last all the way going down the aisle. That's what some folks say. Some other folks say, I bet it don't last past the reception. Because, you know, I've been in some marriages. And I've been marrying folks and doing this for some 30 years. I've seen some strange things. I've seen some folks you marry today, and then six weeks, six months, six days later, they divorce. But this is how it is. What they'll do, they'll say it ain't going to last past the reception. And then some folks say it ain't going to last past the paternity test. <laughs> Let me get on back. Let me get on back to the word. I know I got, I told you finger sandwiches. It's all right if I just finger sandwiches don't throw, get on finish with it. Here's what the Bible says. He wrote her on the ground. Uh, she wrote on the ground. And the Bible says, and I like the way Clark said it in there. He said there were so many idle conjectures there that when Jesus wrote on the ground, he wrote grace, love, and mercy. Because that woman was there. The law was... And I just want to give y'all a little bit of background about the way that they did it when they brought somebody to Jesus. And I told you, point two is that mercy and grace is there for everybody. I'm at my second point. Mercy and grace is there for everybody. They were going to stone her. The old writings say that they built a 10-foot scaffold, tied her behind her back, hands behind her back. And if she was guilty, and see, here, here's the part that I left out to y'all. In the Old Testament, now this is New Testament here, but in the Old Testament, when a woman cheated, they brought her before the priest. And in Deuteronomy, she would be brought in front of the priest, and the priest would get a glass of water. And it was called the law of jealousy. And he would tell her, he'd open up the thing, and he would tell her, drink the water. If she drunk the water while sitting in the chair in front of the priest, her stomach would swell. And if she, her stomach swole, that means she had cheated on him. Y'all with me? But because adultery was so common, that's why the man wasn't there. Because everybody was cheating. And just because everybody doing it don't make it right. I wish I heard somebody say man on that. 
just because everybody's unfaithful don't make it right. Amen, Amen somebody. Uh, grace had to step in. And so the Bible says, and the grace of God that bring up salvation, Titus 2 and 11, have appeared unto all men, teaching us denying ungodliness and worldly lusts that we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. And, and, and then it goes on for, and it says, looking on to the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ, our, our Savior. Now this is the thing I want you to hear. If you hear nothing else, I say that when his mercy came there, that that, that, that then he said to them him that's without sin let him cast the first stone I had to research this a little bit because the point wasn't he that's without a sin but it was he that's without this particular sin did y'all hear that uh, now, now y'all can get up here and act all saved and, and self-righteous and sanctified but I didn't sin after I got saved I thought I knew Jesus, but I really didn't know Jesus until I met him in his mercy. I didn't know Jesus uh, until I had almost messed up my marriage. Uh, I got the sweetest wife in the world, but you don't really know where you are until temptation walked down your door. Now, I ain't talking to y'all folks that's super deep, uh, but I'm talking to us that then got on our knees uh, and had to come back to Jesus uh, and say, Lord, uh, how did I get in that mess? Uh, Lord, how did I wake up in that woman's bed? Uh, Lord, how did I get up here and lie? Lord, I, how did I, you, you know, uh, I told the preacher I was going to do this, uh, but I didn't do it and I can't show my face. Uh, but God said, uh, my mercy and my grace uh, is sufficient. Uh, can I just preach a minute here? Uh, my Bible says that Paul, the apostle, uh, said I got a thorn in my flesh uh, and I besought the Lord three times. Uh, and I said, Lord, uh, will you take this thorn out of my flesh? Uh, I don't know about some of y'all uh, but my worst enemy uh, is the one that looks me in the mirror uh, the worst person I got to deal with uh, it ain't my mama it ain't my brother but it's me uh, and I'm standing uh, in the need of prayer uh, I come to the Lord uh, and I say Lord uh, here I am uh, I done sinned uh, I done done it again uh, and again uh, and again you say Marcus uh, Will you help me and tell me uh, what does the Lord say? Uh, the Bible says uh, if your brother offend you seven times, uh, you got to forgive him seven uh, times 70. Uh, and he said, our Heavenly Father uh, is better than that. Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, I'm trying to tell you that grace uh, is for everybody. Uh, Paul said in Romans 6 and 1, uh, shall we continue? in sin uh, that grace may abound uh, God forbid uh, he said in Romans 5 and 20 uh, where sin abound uh, grace uh, much more abound uh, I want you to know today uh, we're living uh, in the grace of God uh, I'm so glad uh, that one day uh, the Lord sent his son uh, in the likeness of sinful flesh uh, and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh. I'm so glad that Jesus walked down here and he talked and he was tempted by the devil. But I'm so glad that he never did yield. I ain't Jesus. I didn't yield it before. I didn't slip. I didn't fail. I didn't stumbled. But I'm so glad that every time I'm down, he comes to me uh, and he picks me up uh, he said come under me uh, oh ye that are labored uh, and heavy laden uh, and I'm going to give you rest uh, what the Lord does uh, can I preach just another minute uh, Jeremiah said uh, in the 18th chapter uh, God said uh, go to the potter's house uh, and look at the potter uh, that's a vessel that he's making as he made the vessel he shaped it he molded it he made it but while he was making it there was a flaw in the vessel the potter destroyed the vessel and out of that same material he made it over I'm so glad 
uh, that the Bible says if any man be in Christ uh, he is a new creature old things uh, old things uh, are passed away uh, all things uh, become new uh, one day uh, Jesus uh, he stepped in my heart uh, one day uh, his love uh, got shared in my heart uh, and I'm not the same uh, what do you mean uh, can I give my testimony uh, about 20 years ago uh, they told me I had cancer uh, and they said I was gonna die uh, but I heard uh, what Isaiah said uh, he was wounded uh, for my transgressions uh, he was bruised uh, for my iniquities uh, and the chastisement of our peace uh, was upon him uh, with his stripes uh, we are here it don't stop there uh, they whipped him uh, they beat him uh, they plucked off his beard uh, they lied and accused him uh, and that one all oh, uh, they put nails in his hand uh, nails in his feet uh, and they hung him uh, on Calvary's cross uh, but I'm so glad uh, that my Lord uh, didn't say a mumbling word uh, I'm so glad uh, he hung there all day uh, he hung there all night uh, then they took him off the cross uh, put him in a borrowed tomb uh, when they put him in a borrowed tomb uh, that one all uh, he lay there uh, but he went down in hell uh, preached all that was in captivity uh, he preached uh, took the keys uh, of death uh, he took the keys of hell uh, out the devil's hand uh, and the bible says uh, who to never uh, the son set free uh, is free indeed uh, what do you mean uh, when he took the keys uh, my bible says early uh, on sunday morning uh, he got up uh, he got up uh, he got up uh, with all power in his hand in his hand all power was in his hand and he said all you gotta do is come to me all ye that labor and i'm gonna give you rest will you help me with this